everyone. Thank you for joining us this month as we continue our series on taking the lead and how leaders are out front like the Grand Marshal of the parade, showing everyone the way. And legendary leaders of the Old Testament are showing us how to be great leaders and that we can be too. And this month we're learning everyone can be a leader. God gives me courage to lead. God helps me learn from my mistakes. And God gives me leaders that I can follow. And we have a memory verse this month. It's Micah 6, 8. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with our God. So practice those memory verses and let's jump into some singing. I'm all wrapped up, I'm all tied up, I'm all tangled up in Jesus. I'm all wrapped up, I'm all tied up, I'm all tangled up in God. I'm all wrapped up, I'm all tied up, I'm all tangled up in Jesus. I'm all wrapped up, tied up, tangled up in God. Oh yeah. Can you go faster? Faster? Let's do it. I'm all wrapped, wrapped up, up, I'm all tied up, I'm all tangled up in Jesus. I'm all wrapped up, I'm all tied up, I'm all tangled up in God. I'm all wrapped up, I'm all tied up, I'm all tangled up in Jesus. I'm all wrapped up, tied up, tangled up in God. Oh yeah. Good job. Chicken Nuggets, it's me, Coral. And I'm Andy. Welcome to Girl TV. Welcome to Girl TV. Hosted by Coral. Where we have fun with our friends, talk about Jesus, and go over everything the Bible has to offer. Now, once again, welcome to Girl TV. What's up, Carl? Oh, the usual. Just living my life. Busy as a bee. You know, if that bee had a full-time job and had beautiful, luscious locks. What about you, Andy? Big plans for the weekend? I was actually going to ask for your help because there's this big summer parade coming up and I was going to... A parade? <laughs> Andy, you know how much I love parades. I do? Of course, you silly bald man. Parades are like a fancy buffet of entertainment on wheels. So you'll help me? Of course. What do you need? Something flexible? Charismatic? A singer? Oh, I need someone strong. Excuse me? Strong. You know in parades when they have those giant big balloons floating around? Oh, oh yeah. Well, I just need one more person to hold onto the rope so they don't fly away. Well, you came to the right guy, Andy. By that time, I'll be the strongest guy around. How's that? I've seen you break a sweat lifting up an Oreo. In my defense, they were double stuffed Oreos, okay? Plus, I got a drink that makes me really strong. That really works? Well, of course. Look at this. How does that prove that it actually worked and you're actually strong? Ye've little faith. Observe. That thing isn't even real. Let me see. See, all right, watch. Easier than that one. <sighs> Told you so. Jada! Hey guys, how y'all doing? Pretty good. I was just telling Andy how strong I am. Wow, is that true, Andy? Is he really strong? Apparently. That's great because today's story has something to do with someone who was also very strong. Are you talking about my cousin Brock? <laughs> nope. Mm -mm. I was curious because he did watch the end of Avengers like four times and didn't cry at all. He's super strong. <laughs> nope. But I was talking about Samson. Of course. I love the story of Samson. Do you remember that story, right, Andy? You may have to jog my memory. All right. Well, this story is in Judges 16. Now, when Samson was born, his parents promised to God that their son would commit to the Nazarite vow. Which was a promise to God, and it also meant that Samson was never supposed to cut his hair. Carl, you didn't take the Nazarite vow bow, did you? Canary to popular belief, I have not. So back back to what you said before, Samson was really strong? Like crazy strong, like strongest man on the planet. How, did he work out a lot? Well, it was a strength given to him by God. And as long as Samson kept the Nazarite vow and didn't cut his hair, he would have that strength. 
So Samson was a good guy that always followed and listened to God? Well, like anybody, Samson made mistakes, and he made enemies with a group of people called the Philistines. Well, they all wanted to find out where Samson's power came from, so they went to the woman that Samson was in love with. Delilah? Yes! Look at you, starting to remember things. They offered money to Delilah, and in return, she would tell them how Samson got his strength. Well, that's mean. It was, but Samson was smart. When asked where he got his strength, he tricked Delilah three times. Yep, he wouldn't tell her the truth, but eventually she got upset. She's like, you keep lying to me. Like, how, how can you love me if you're not telling me the truth? <laughs> Yikes, well, what did Samson do? He finally gave in and told her the truth. And when Samson fell asleep, she cut off all his hair. Then the Philistines came in and took Samson to be their prisoner. Oh, that's awful. He messed up big time. He sure did. They took him in and placed him against the pillars of the building the Philistines were in. And then, can you guess what Samson did next, Andy? Did he pray? He did pray. He cried out to God. And he asked for mercy and help to fight the Philistines now that his strength was gone. And it happened, right? It sure did. Even though Samson had broken rules and made mistakes, God had mercy on Samson. And that's exactly what God will do for us. Because I know more than anyone, I've made plenty of mistakes. Me too. And I know I'm going to make a whole lot more mistakes in the future. But do you really think that God's going to forgive us and help us learn from our mistakes? Of course. That's one of my favorite things that I've been taught. God helps me learn from my mistakes. Jada, that's our big idea! Today's big idea is God helps me learn from my mistakes. So let's say it out loud on the count of three. One, two, three. God, God helps, helps me, me learn, learn from, from my, my mistakes. mistakes. Yeah. <laughs> ah, yes. And I've made plenty of them, but not as much as Andy. What? Jada hasn't, because she's pretty much perfect. So Andy, before we head over to get ready for the parade, you wanna grab some tacos? Eh, I don't like tacos. Hi, hey Andy. Can you try to hit this against your head again? Sure. Hey, you up for some tacos? <laughs> you read my mind. See you next week, kids. Thank you for watching, and tune in next week for a new episode of So we're learning about Samson this week, and Samson is special because God made a promise to his parents that they would have a son, and that son would deliver Israel from the Philistines. So we've been learning the book of Judges, and the book of Judges had Deborah and Gideon and now Samson, but really the book is, is all about Israel and their bad choices. Israel keeps making bad choices. They keep turning their back on God and following the ways of the people around them. And then God gets frustrated and, with them and they get conquered. And then they cry out to God, please save us. And so God sends someone to save them. And then after a while, they go back to their bad choices, don't they? And then they cry out for God to send someone to save them and he does. And then they go right back to their ways. So it's really a story about mistakes and the cycle of mistakes. And we can definitely do that too, can't we? So Samson is just one of those people where Israel cried out to God and God hurt them. And he promised Samson's parents that their son would deliver Israel from the Philistines. Now, we might think, whoa, that is so cool. Samson must be so awesome. And he was really strong, wasn't he? Because he made a vow to God. He would never cut his hair. And so God gave him extra strength. And he was super strong. But it didn't make him special. God made him special. Samson was pretty proud of how strong he was and how awesome he was and how cool he was. And kind of started to forget about God giving him the strength. Right? And started to forget about God and he started making some bad choices. Just like we always do. Right? It's easy to get sucked into the bad choices of people around us. Or it's easy to start thinking about ourselves right? And what we want and what we want to do instead of maybe what the people around us want to do or what God wants us to do. And we make some bad choices. And Samson was one of those people. He made a bad choice and he trusted someone who didn't have his best interest at heart. He trusted someone who was trying to trick him. And after a while, he gave in and told her the truth and Delilah cut his hair. 
Now that hair isn't necessarily what gave Samson his strength. God gave him the strength. But his hair represented the promise he made to God and it was broken. And God took Samson's, Samson's strength away. Samson made a bad choice and he had to suffer the consequence of that choice. And God still used him to save Israel from the Philistines, right? Even though he made a mistake, even though he made a bad choice, God used him, but it didn't save Samson. Samson still had to suffer the consequences of his choices, the consequences of his behavior. So God can really use anybody, whether they're good or bad, whether they go along with God's plan or not. God's plan always finds a way. That's how powerful God is. God always finds a way. He will use us no matter what, right? It's up to us, the choices we make and the consequences we suffer. Because we can make some bad choices, but we can make some good ones too. So if we don't want to be like Samson, who was very selfish and thought only about himself, let's think about other people, right? Let's think how we can help serve our brother and sister or our mom and dad or our friends and neighbors. Let's think about how we can take care of other people instead of just thinking about ourselves. And then God can really use us and we can let our light shine, right? And we can glorify God. And that's what we want to do. We want to walk in step with the Spirit. We want to glorify God. Happy Father's Day, everyone. I want to give a special shout out to the father in my life, my dad, but also Jameson, who is a fantastic father to our two sons. And I also want to give a special shout out to all the single dads out there. You guys are doing amazing and awesome and wonderful. Happy Father's Day. Hi, Daddy. What I love about you is you always make sure, you always take care of us and make sure doing the right thing and making sure we're safe. What I love about you is that you care for us and that you cook lots of good food on the grill and that you give us a lot of stuff. Hi, Daddy. What I love about you is you change my diapers and you feed me milk. Thank you. I love you. Happy Father's Day, Dad. Thank you for taking us to swimming lessons and inviting friends over. I love you, Daddy. Happy Father's Day. I love my dad so much I might explode. I also love about my dad is that he never gives up and he perseveres through stuff even though life is hard. Happy Father's Day. I like my dad because he's patient and comes up with really good ideas, whether it's for games, dinner, or whatever. Happy Father's Day, Dad. You are the best dad for me, and I love you. Happy Father's Day, Dad. I love you because you teach me all the things we learn at work, and you provide for us a lot. Also, you're the best dad ever. Happy Father's Day. All right, let's pray. God, thank you so much for loving us. Thank you so much for being able to use us, even though we aren't perfect, even though we mess up and make mistakes, God, that your love is unconditional and that you have mercy and forgive us and love us no matter what. Please help us strive to take care of others and serve others and to not only think about ourselves selfishly like Samson did, but to really strive to take care of the people around us. We love you and pray all this in your son's name. Amen. See you guys next week.